Hello, welcome back to Brenner Sushi Live Noding. In this video, I'm going to try to kind of uh, share some of my experience in uh, programming, whether it's a, like a visual programming or like a normal kind of programming um, using Python or using Wolfram Alpha Programming Lab or using Blender and Scratch It's like a lot it's a lot of things to take, uh, especially if you're not, um, if you never, never done any programming before, and then you're, you never, ever like um, study any kind of a computer science or, but you want to do like visualizations, and at some point I was also having this kind of frustration. Say, you're, you want to learn programming, right? But the end result is like. You want to be able to visualize data. You want to be able to manipulate data and kind of process data. For example, like being able to visualize a um, bunch of random circles, and you want to control the circles. And if you if you learn three D at some point, you will be able to do that using particles, right? You can generate random partic uh, like random circles using particles pretty easily right it's a it's like a classic problem at some point you really needs to get used to all these kind of uh, ways to do things but programming but I want to do that using programming so that's uh, the things is like like if you're starting with programming and then you want to draw circles it's not as easy as uh, picking us like a programming language and then you'll be able to do that if you are using something like the um, processing for example processing they call it like visual programming language it's actually if you are using processing you will be learning like some kind of Java programming language or these days you can also use JavaScript and also use Python uh, I recommend you to actually give processing a try at some point, even though it's uh, it's not the easiest, but they have some like really cool uh, cool ways to for you to be able to kind of um, being able to draw some things very very easily, to draw and to animate um, objects very very easily. Even though processing is actually hard, I'm telling you, it's a uh, it's a bit hard to get over the syntax at the beginning because you will you will need to get used to the idea of uh, Java and JavaScript and to you start with uh, making like a like a setup and draw functions um, that can be kind of scary at for the beginners. For example, uh, where is it? Where's the beginner shapes? Render techniques. Now, where's the most, the easiest example is probably this one. Getting started by K series and Ben Fry. Uh, with processing, if you download the app, this app is uh, already have this um, really nice environment for you to type in your like a programming commands and draw your ellipse and then very very easily you'll be able to draw ellipse um, that's kind of interacting with the mouse press the interactive bits is actually very interesting and it's uh, something that processing can do really really well so I at some point if you if you have time to sit down and learn programming you can you can start with processing but processing is also a little bit funny and hard so, so if you're thinking to do Python, yes, you will start uh, by doing like a simple stuff like the calculations, for example. Oh, by the way, I'm using this app called Pineapple. Pineapple is an, an app, I think it's on a Mac and I don't know if it's on Linux or Windows. But this app is like like a like a pretty wrapper for something called Jupyter I Python. Jupyter I Python notebook. Um, if you're interested with this, um, Jupyter I Python is like an interactive notebook environment 
for you. Um, you okay? I think I'm kind of jumping around uh, with this live nodding, but basically, you want to start programming, right? And to do like a programming, you need to at least have like a text editor, just like in Blender. Okay, if you switch to scripting and you, you have a look here and then you you have this um, console Python console and you have this uh, text editor for text editor any computer nowadays should have like the most basic text editor if you save a file um, using text editor and you write a little bit of program you can actually run the program and with in case of Python as long you have like a Python interpreter and like Python is installed already if, if you are using Blender and you want to do a little bit of Python, you can already do that using this Python Interactive Console and you can type in your program here. It's not... Um, if you are like total beginner, you can use uh, Python in Blender uh, for simple things like um, draw some things on the screen, like uh, to make a mesh primitive cube, for example, and do things, simple things like that. But yeah, it's not not always the friendliest, but you can you can do that. You know, like you can print hello world, or you can do like a print name or print blender times ten times, and you can get something like this. It's a it's the basic um, programming concepts that you will you will learn eventually. But if you actually want to kind of, you want to skip jump and you want to kind of, instead of doing programming, you want to do, you want to do it visually. Like, uh, kind of like uh, what's being shown in uh, using processing here, you can suddenly being able to generate like hundreds of circles. This is like a, like a big jump right it's like a see I'm still thinking what how to explain this properly from here being unable to draw anything you're you're only like can do simple things like this of course you can do you can import other module but it's, you're not there yet it's a it's kind of weird from here and how how do you being able to get to here, like you're being able to draw a lot of circles like this. How do you do that? Um, you need to understand some kind of like a computational thinking, like um, the idea of drawing a single circle, for example. How do you draw a single circle? How how do you do that? You know, in how do you get from here from by just by typing a command, for example, like circle. Is that how you do it? Run the program and error because it says we don't have function named circle. Because okay, by default, Python's um, the standard Python doesn't have like a function that draw a circle unless you draw like if unless you're importing a module that deals with it. Importing a module is like just like installing add-on inside Blender. Um, and yeah, that's actually the first thing that you need to, um, to know. Like, you need to some kind of functions. How do you get the functions? Someone either someone already make it for you, or you make it yourself. Um, like a function that actually draws something. And where do you draw it? How do you draw it? It's all part of the like a programming kind of thinking. Um, if you are using processing, of course, this this program, this app processing um, to learn programming, it, it comes with a uh, hundreds of drawing functions, so it's make it easier for you. And also, if you are using something like Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram Alpha is like another programming language, and Wolfram is kind of one of uh, I think the most interesting um, programming language. It tries to kind of uh, Think of everything as a, like a numbers. Um, although, 
for Wolfram, you need to, I think you need to buy the license for Wolfram Mathematica, and it's actually pretty expensive, like hundred to thousand dollars. And I, although you can use the their cloud versions like Wolfram Alpha, that kind of works on even on iPad or iPhone, and it works on a normal computer environment. Um, it's a uh, it's kind of limited. Um, you cannot deal like with too much of data. You need to pay for it. So the the cloud version is not. I think it's a bit slow sometimes. Sometimes I wish I have access to Wolfram like the Wolfram Mathematica, like the real thing, like the program that you can install locally, offline, and that will be perfect. And Wolfram has its own language as well. If you look at it, you look at these uh, functions that it's giving. It's it's not. It's a little bit different to uh, functions that you use in Python. So in, you can kind of guess, okay, this is like, it's using this function called graphics. And I think I need to refresh this one. Um, kind of start from the basic. Oh, I'll, I'll go to this one, draw circles of point. Start from beginning. This one should give you an example with a uh, more basic functions. So it says graphics, and then this kind of bracket, and then inside it, okay, points, and then circle points. You can kind of guess, okay, it should be kind of drawing circles using points, right? And that's probably what it's gonna do. If I run it online here, like shift enter, it might be a little bit slow, but it will draw the circle for you. And let's wait a little bit. Oh, I think Safari and Wolfram run really slow if I'm recording. Basically, I give. I actually, I had time at some point to learn a little bit of Wolfram Alpha, and they have a lot of video tutorials as well, which is make it nice for you, and you can kind of follow a lot of cool things that Wolfram can do. Wolfram, I can tell you that Wolfram can do a lot. Okay, it has the like, like a database, a uh, huge database of data of a lot of everything. It's like a, you can imagine like encyclopedia. Of everything like a celebrity it has some database about celebrity about books about art animals a lot of stuff you can for example you can make you can tell Wolfram Alpha to kind of give it like a hundred different types of butterfly and then uh, give 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 me like a butterfly with blue color and then sort the butterfly um, using its color or sort it by um, region Wolfram can do all that, even like planets or like a lot of things. So Wolfram, I think at some point, there should be like a tool that's accessible for everyone like Wolfram. Now, I mean, it's accessible now if you have uh, like uh, money to use it. But I, I kind of always, I always tend to like uh, using open source thing. Like, um, like Python programming is open source. Processing is open source. Wolfram, is, you can kind of use Wolfram for free with the cloud but it's kind of limited so yeah it's still Wolfram I wish Wolfram is like something that everyone have on their computer you know okay just now you saw me kind of changing the number here graphic point circle and then I kind of increasing the number more and more and this thing updates every time I make changes and then drawing it this is should be like the first um, the first cool thing you can do using programming. Of course, at some point you will be like, okay, I don't I don't just I don't want to just draw a circle of points with a lot of points. It's kind of boring, right? At some point you want to be able to draw a lot of circles and you want to use a different color, different size, and maybe you want like a random points of circles. Um, yes, and that's actually you can do pretty, pretty, uh, pretty easily. Um, 
the second after running a function, after you getting used to the idea of okay, with programming language, you kind of typing the commands to run a function, and the function allows you to draw some things. That's the the first cool thing. The second cool thing I think is the manipulator. Not many programming language kind of giving you this uh, ability to manipulate the parameter very easily. But I think this is the second big thing that everyone should know and I wish any programming language give this kind of interactive feedback for anything. Processing is actually kind of doing that as well. Um, although in this example, they're, they're showing this example where you're using the mouse press and to draw this circle. This is kind of already a little bit of um, advanced. Um, processing actually have this kind of a like a pra parameter throttle where you can you type your programming language and then you kind of um, just using a slider to change the value and then and the result will be displayed right away that that kind of interactive feedback i think is uh, the most important second the most important thing that um, any like a beginner programmer should know i learn programming by myself and it takes me a while until i found out that this is actually really really important the sliders and whatever kind of inputs that users can add whenever they're doing something now now I'm gonna jump to blender and then here I, I will actually use uh, I will use um, spare chop I'm gonna use spare chop spare chop um, you can say it's like a it's a node based programming environment okay we are using nodes instead of codes so we are not typing something to to get to generate something but we are using uh, nodes and we have a lot of function already here if you shift a you get a lot of these nodes there you can imagine them like uh, functions with parameters like for example we have circle just like in in wolfram or in in processing you have a nodes and you have uh, these uh, parameters and you have this output vertices, edges, polygon and you can guess what they are if you just plug in the vertices you get these points you can control the radius, you can control the number of points and if you want like a proper circle you need to have edges or you need to have polygons that's very important but this is like the most basic but you take this for granted um, for programming, uh, for like a three D programs like Maya, Houdini, like the big brothers of node procedural node space system, especially Houdini, you can do this quite easily. This is something that's uh, so simple, and uh, like any artist can take this for granted. Um, Blender with add-ons like animation nodes and Spherechalk can do this also very very easily so instead of typing the program you're doing it uh, simply by using a node and using a viewer for the output that's really like the basic and you take it for granted but this is like really actually it's actually really really cool that you, you're being you, you are able to do this at some point when I'm kind of more fluent with Python and kind of can quickly generate um, any kind of ideas using scripted nodes I'll I can explain that more properly for now um, I'm gonna switch back and forth between uh, Wolfram and um, spare chalk here like spare chalk environment using nodes um, actually now if I go back to if I go back to this guy this is a um, pineapple or this is like Jupyter I Python this is actually actually a really good environment as well if you're learning programming or like data visualization um, because um, instead of uh, instead instead of using like a text editor or I'm actually using um, sublime sublime text this is also a text editor but it has like a cool uh, syntax highlighter like for example if I save this as um, script or something dot py for Python language, Sub Sublime Text actually understand that's the the type of language I'm using is Python, so it's gonna give like a syn syntax highlighting. 
uh, let me save this first real quick test.py save and so it's uh, now it's, it's like red color so I can say import import whatever like impo import a module and let's let's wait a bit somehow it's super slow at the moment maybe because it's running so many programs but anyway like I said to create a program like the basic things you you can have uh, you can use is a text editor like this but I'm using sublime text because it's sublime text can give a nice syntax ha highlighting and a lot of um, other cool stuff but instead of using text editor sometimes you want to use uh, you want to eventually use something like uh, like this like uh, this is like Jupyter IPython or interactive Python where you can you can actually type like a uh, typing your your own notes and you can also you can also do programming right away here like uh, let's say you, you want to do like a uh, five times 12 and you get the result already like really quickly you get 60 and you if you want to make any changes you can do that that's kind of a uh, the basic functions of uh, programming like a calculator but of course you can do a lot more and um, but that's the, the very basic even even uh, in spare talk you can do some kind of calculation like that very very easily using any of the math function you take this uh, like like for granted but this is actually really really cool that you you're able to do this um, you can use stethoscope I think for the output see you want say you want 5 times 12 you get 60 here you can change the number very easily this is this is again what I say you, you can easily manipulate parameters and numbers um, using sliders and that's actually a big thing um, you can also use like a range range of integer for example you want to multiply this uh, 2 multiplied by this range of number so you get 0 to 4 this number is actually uh, this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 you multiply all the list this list of numbers with two and you get this number you can use the stethoscope or you can use also the note I believe this notes and you get a result um, yeah so you can do this really easily and that's a uh, that's still pretty incredible because if you were to do this um, using Python uh, let's say you can let's say you have a bunch of numbers like a one two three and you want to for every numbers you want to multiply multiply the number with number two you will be doing something like this for number in my numbers number multiplied by two and you want to print it out and you get this list two four six and maybe your number is like a range of number from 1 to 50 and you get this result so that's like quite a lot it's pretty it's actually pretty cool that you you'll be able to do this and you run it each time it's actually already pretty cool program even though you take it for granted um, if you're like beginner this is actually quite big that to be able to understand this this is like a loop um, in if you're using Spreadshop, you don't see the loops too much because you're kind of doing it uh, all at the same time. Um, let's see, my numbers range. Yeah, but uh, the thing is with this, um, uh, there's one thing with the uh, Jupyter I Python or this uh, pineapple. You are actually able to give some kind of interactive uh, slider. But you need to kind of import the module. I, I'm, I'm not going to show it to you now because I'm not so fluent with that. But you can kind of give that kind of slider. 
that slider is actually again a big thing um, if I switch to another example of Wolfram, see Wolfram is cloud because it's like a cloud based this is like a cloud based Wolfram lab it's keep refreshing all the time, you need internet all the time sometimes it's nice to have it offline Wolfram has one example like this uh, circle scapes I think at some point I already show, shown you how to generate this procedurally using Spreadshop or animation nodes in Blender but I'll I want to do it again um, I want to do it again for um, probably slightly differently but I think Spreadshop has evolved now and it's so, so much easier to this now to do this now so look at this uh, this is Wolfram language okay this is not Python but it's a Wolfram language it has its own functions and this guy actually able to draw like quickly draw hundred circles very very easily I'll I'll run this now basically what's doing is like generate a table uh, actually I'll switch to the the last example I think oh this thing is running so slowly at the moment let's generate this okay this one like what Wolfram doing with this function is like um, generate some graphics data or graphics objects make a table of basically makes a table of numbers with random circles um, between this uh, range and generate 100 of them so let's translate this into Blender uh, using Spreadshop of course you can also use Python to kind of draw 100 circles but I, I want to do it using nodes it's, a, it's always kind of um, it's hard how I get to uh, how I get hooked into all this node based workflow where at some in one side you have uh, like, a, like a programmers who can do this very easily just type in the code on the other side you, you have artists that artists um, if you ask an artist to make 100 circles with random numbers they can do it in many different ways you can they can use particles they can use I don't know maybe they ask the programmers to make it make a program for them now we are kind of in between here we are using nodes and we, we have the tools and we sometimes uh, you need a bit of programming kind of thinking in order to understand this really well okay the task is to make bunch of circles with random size okay that's as simple um, like a, that's the problem um, that's the task and you want to do it using nodes uh, you don't want to type it in just you just gonna use nodes at some point if I'm more fluent with Python and I can quickly make script node to do that for now we know we can make a circle in order to make a bunch of circle is really really easy right let's save this first this is spread chop wolfram like or or spread of programming thinking of nodes i should call this the joy of node zero but i i'm talking like here and there but i really this is one one presentations that one day i can do it under 15 minutes 15 minutes like um, in a TED talk you know I want to say that having this kind of environment like blender that's available for everyone on any computer that can install it blender and Python and all kind of modules that you can load very easily and if, if it works uh, and it's just work you know I wish that blender has um, environment that's a little bit like um, Jupyter I Python so so you can type in like nodes and then you can have a bunch of program and you can just uh, make changes and in a way this is actually this node based workflow is um, is kind of the nice spot okay if you have this and you're able to use a script and you can load the script at any time you already have like a, the perfect environment 
to do your own programming and it's like a really really powerful programming environment okay it's it's not like Wolfram yet Wolfram has like a huge database and Wolfram has a lot of algorithm and a lot of uh, what do I say like uh, it's, it even has like neural network and but the algor algorithm is uh, the big thing of uh, Wolfram I think not many people know this but Wolfram can do like really weird things like uh, let's say you have like uh, you can tell Wolfram okay like um, get location get my locations and then you can tell Wolfram and how far is my location from seven different country or something? Programming language to sort the data and filter it out before you can visualize the data. Um, so yeah, programming and data is like the the biggest thing uh, you can do, and especially if you're you have like a algorithm to do it for you but anyway let's get back to this uh, sorry I was talking too far um, make a random circle 100 random circle in order to make 100 circle you don't have the parameter in the circle itself but we know that with spread chalk we can kind of pass uh, the transformation data into the matrix here so if you use matrix in or actually use uh, just random vector plug into this guy directly and make 100 of them you actually have 100 circle right you can have different radius of the circle like makes like a small circles just now I, I'm hiding the, the circle this bunch of circle they are all the same same size. If you want like a random circles, you can actually do that quite easily. You just provide a random number generator and just plug into this guy. If you because we have like one hundred different uh one hundred circles being generated on the fly, you can give it a uh, random radius on the fly as well. If you provide the right number here, and Spreadshop can do that almost like you take this for granted but this is actually like thanks to the hard work of a uh, spreadshop developer to to make this this kind of system this kind of environment i think this is really like pretty amazing oops actually save it file set as okay bunch of circles if you don't like the color blue you can always change it to white maybe yeah so it's a more it's prettier give it a different value more or less and you can randomize the position more or less you're getting something like this cool now use random color and use disk instead of circle disk in Wolfram I'll, uh, in Wolfram this is actually like a like a field circle in blender circle with a like a polygon face is actually like a proper circle like this and Every time I run this, actually, it's generating a different result, different color, different size, different positions, and this is doing it on the fly. Let's do that using Spreadshop. Uh, this is also something that's easy to do if you know Spreadshop quite well. Or oh, this is actually like the basic thing you want to do in Spreadshop is uh, make a circles with random color. So we're gonna do exactly that. So what's missing here? instead of edges we just plug in the polygon now we have polygons but we want different color and different color because this is we are using blender we are also working with blender environment as well you need some kind of familiarity with blender in this case i will be using blender internal render i can switch to cycles and cycles have different way to treat alpha at some point this circle is actually using uh, the transparency See here, uh, like try a different opacity. So we want to be able to control the alpha. So um, in order to do that, instead of using the, the viewer, we want to generate real objects. And for real object, we need to have, we need to use viewer be mesh, okay? And let's not generate 100 circle yet. Let's create, uh, 
10 of them. I, I'll unplug this. And I only have like a single circle at the moment. I give it a, a material. This is Blender internal render material. The basic material, but it's also quite powerful. I like it. Let's turn on the object color. Now with the object color, we can easily change the color of the objects and also give it a opacity like this alpha, you see? The alpha, if I switch to material and give a lamp, hemisphere. This guy is actually transparent. Um, I'll try to make a duplicate and yeah, you just have to trust me that's actually this guy is transparent. Um, we want to do that using spray chop. Um, so just assign the material here. And now let's make a bunch of this guy. Plug in the random vector into the matrix. Now we have a bunch of this guy. Are they having the material? Um, not quite sure. Maybe not yet. Maybe they are. Seems like they have different texture or something. Let me check with the outliner. We have alpha and this guy should be a blue color. Oh, actually, actually everything, actually this is working fine. This guy, I'm kind of giving a color manually. But I, what I want to do is to be able to colorize it on the fly. So I'll use search up for that. There is color node here, like vertex color and color in, color out, but they're not for coloring. For In this case, you want to color using set, object ID set. And just type in color here. And this parameter is corresponding to this guy. You see? bpy.data.objects color. This is a parameter color that we want to change and we can use it on the we can do it on the fly. And the value is RGBA. RGB with alpha. So for that we can use the color in. And we need to turn on use alpha. Plug this guy in there and now we can see this this guy is now working. We can give it a white color, any color, just by just uh, simply by changing the RGB. If you want um, random color, you need to provide um, the random color. You need to generate it on the fly, so you need to use. Some, you can use something like random vector and. We need to plug this X Y Z. Um, we need to plug this value into RGB, and we need uh, how many? How many circle we have now? Ten. So we need ten. But we need to plug this into the RGBA. So we need to separate the value. X and the Y and the Z. So now we have random color. But sometimes we are getting like a negative value. Negative value in RGB is a no-no. You're gonna you're gonna get black. So in order to fix this, we use math and use absolute here. Absolute oh, absolute. There you go. Now we have random value generated for each circle. Go back to the top view. Uh, what is missing now? The alpha, we can actually change it as well. Here you see the alpha. It's now like 50% or around 50% opacity. We have 10 of circle, each one with, a, with the same size here. But since we have now like a, this is random points to generate the circle. This is the random color for each circle. This is the random number for the radius. We need to make everything the same, the total the same. So we need to a single val to provide a single value here. That's correspond to the position of the circle and color of the circle. 
and also this random number for the circle that we can plug into the radius now you can see this is like the minimum numbers and this is the maximum circle radius now we can simply give like 100 you see it's as simple as that once you have this small little program you can do anything and we just build it in a few minutes or few seconds if you're fast you can randomize the seed of the color you can randomize the seed of the position of the circle you can also randomize the seed of the radius of the circle and see you see this uh, this act of changing the parameter interactively and getting the result is like a big thing in programming i don't know it seems like a, like a, like a small deal but it's actually a big deal uh, i can actually make 150 or even 1000 circle and it's actually it's not it's no problem at, at, at all and this is gen generated on the fly a thousand objects in blender is it feels like it's a bit slow because you have thousand objects to, uh, to, pl to do to deal with uh, in 3d view but it's still pretty fast you know it's not not a problem and this thing is kind of dynamic as well you see it by changing from 1000 to 100 uh, we kind of deleting like uh, 1000 objects so and that everything is working fine um, I need to turn on the transparency in the material so we can render it out see this is the final render it's uh, it's 3d because we are using blender you can render it from any camera view and the result is um, like you can control the resolutions and you can control a lot of things even the materials this is like the basic material but we kind of dealing with um, a lot of data and like uh, all these numbers numerical numbers and the whole setup here is basics but uh, the concepts the graphs to get grasp grasp of this uh, concept of using numbers is a is a big thing um, especially for like a non programmer non-programmers like me it took me how many years until I kind of get this uh, a few years actually um, yeah like I said I actually start this uh, programming thing using processing it's actually not the easiest way I wish that um, back then we have um, Python that's able to do things that processing can do um, processing is using Java and JavaScript language now. Java, uh, Java programming language is what it's teaching. A lot of cool things, a lot of uh, cool algorit algorithm, a lot of cool theories in processing that I really want to transfer into nodes. That's basically my idea. And and on top of that, I want to be able to visualize things easily, just like a uh, just like Wolfram wolfram language can do you know like wolfram provides you everything like according to them you have a lot of algorithm functions already and you can play manipulate data you can process data and you can also kind of source the data from wolfram so wolfram is like huge but wolfram is also sometimes i think it's not too accessible well you can kind of use Wolfram language in on the on their app that's uh, running on a cloud on on iPad or iPhone, but yeah, it's too far. Uh, sometimes it's not so accessible, not as accessible as Blender. If you, I think, uh, Blender can run Python now, and you can load the module like NumPy. So Blender is like really awesome if you want to do data visualizations. Um, like now, even though I'm not like a like a like a expert programmers yet, I'm still kind of learning programming. I every now and then I kind of borrow here, here and there a lot of um, ideas from a lot of places, um, especially from processing. Daniel Schiffman, in his YouTube channel, this guy is like a genius. I think I don't know if you ever been to 
his channel, his YouTube channel, and that's the thing about like this uh, processing is like thanks to Daniel Schiffman and some other um, some other teachers out there comes from just r like reading articles online or sometimes actually I get a lot of help from stretch of developers that give me ideas um, yeah I just wish that this kind of powerful tool is something that everyone understand that they already have it on blender of course you can use like a big software like Maya Houdini whatever other tools like cinema 4d or grasshopper a lot of tools out there that can do it also like maybe in even a bigger way but blender is kind of really awesome in, in its own way because um, because it's a uh, it's open source and imagine if you blender and you have this node environment if this node environment kind of grows into blender 3.0 and the future of blenders this blender and python and i don't know this kind of pineapple jupyter ipython interactive uh, mode is really really powerful um, for me personally like data visualization is big and i i want to get into that even though um, even though I haven't really used it for like a real production bits, but I use it, I think I kind of use it for my, to generate my own like artworks, um, but also for my own learning. I like to deal with data that's visual, like uh, you can see the result on your face, visual, and then audio. I like also a little bit of audio programming. I learn like uh, programming like a chalk and sonic pi and apparently there's python module that can handle chuck and sonic pi that's so that's cool i i, I want to talk about that at some point um so so you have data like it's amazing and you can share it with anyone simply by putting in on on github simply just clicking on export to github gist you can just keep the the path uh, to anyone you know just keep them uh, this link so this link appears after you click the export to GIS. give them this link and give them this ID anyone with blender can open it anyone with blender and stretch add-on can get this circle generator this is random circle generators Imagine if a lot of developers use uh, maybe generate more nodes in the future and then either, um, both stretch chalk and animation nodes. Animation nodes is more programmers friendly actually because a lot of things in animation nodes kind of similar to Python. With stretch chalk it's kind of a little bit more advanced. You kind of want to quickly get into it some things. You can easily access the vertices, data, edges, polygon data you can kind of manipulate those kind of mesh data really really easily using spreadshop with animation nodes it's kind of more like um, I don't know it's it's very Python friendly I think you can deal with string very very easily using animation nodes so anyway um, that's a big talk I think I don't know it's over one hour um, yeah that's kind of the idea of um, something that still kind of work in progress is the joy of noting and an old book by blender sushi guy um, coming soon one day I don't know if I if I probably if I never write the books maybe one of you guys can do it but yeah I almost hitting my 500 videos doing live noting and I should get serious at this like writing a book that's kind of talking about notes and stuff um, and I think blender will be part of it notes space I think notes is a big thing I don't know if in the future currently I think Python is one of the most popular language on top of that, we also have Swift, Swift from Apple, Apple Swift. I don't know if 
I think programmers also like Swift because it's kind of like C++ and Python together. And Swift is actually really fast and Swift is actually a programming language that's a code app. It's kind of like interactive. You can see the data and you can manipulate the, the parameters very easily. I like that kind of ideas. That's something that I have by using node-based workflow. These nodes can also be turned into a single script, just like this guy. You can just give a parameters and then turn it into script nodes and it will work. So from text-based kind of code into nodes that's more interactive, and if you have environment like Blender, maybe one day we, everyone's gonna have access to something like Blender, but it's more like a 3D game kind of environment, interactive and real time. I cannot imagine how programming will be in five, 10 years, but but maybe you can tell like a, like a computer program like Siri, you can just tell them, okay, make a bunch of circle with random colors and the, the program will be generated by this uh, virtual assistant. I don't know if that's gonna be like become reality. Maybe one day it's gonna be that simple. You don't need to think about anything. You just tell the computer to do it. You don't need to type it or uh, make a notes like this. But I still like this kind of old school. Uh, it's not old school, actually notes is actually still, it's a powerful environment. There are other sort of program that does this already, but for what we are, for what we have, any computer can install Blender and can install Spreadshock add-on, animation nodes, um, can do Python. Um, as much as I love Apple products and I'm using Apple Mac and everything, I, I like the open source side of things and at some point I try chip computing like uh, Raspberry Pi. I really like that. Such a small computer, such cheap computer under $50 can do Python programming and can be really powerful and you can generate music, generate visualization. I was kind of, I have this uh, weird feeling about it at that time because I used to be like a person that's, I like to have like the most powerful computer with a, like a expensive graphic card. You can do like amazing simulations, effects, um, that's cool. That's cool for the industry, you know, like keep generating like special effects and stuff. But really, like a, like a chip computer that can generate awesome things and you, you're able to learn a lot and you can visualize any kind of data and it's becoming like a, so easy to do this. That's amazing for me. It's more amazing than those simulations like fluid dynamics, whatever. Visual effects is one thing, but on the other side, you have this kind of tools to do learning and to do your own, to make your own program. And I don't, know, I don't know. It's a, it's amazing. This uh, Blender can do this. It's amazing. Python can do a lot. It's amazing. So yeah, there's a lot of talk. Again, coding and noting. I'm kind of in the middle of those two. At some point, maybe I'm more fluent with coding. I will make notes uh, that I can share. For now, I'm actually just using notes and I don't know, convincing people to learn coding is hard enough. Noting is like, what is this noting stuff, you know? Some people get it, some people don't. Uh, at some point, I'll make these presentations much, much shorter, 15 minutes, TED style maybe, but I found it, this is a kind of nice environment to learn programming. Um, noting is nice for coding. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's a long talk and I'm jumping around. Maybe at some point I'll make this like a better presentation of this. But anyway, that's it. That's the joy of noting. Uh, I'm sharing my experience, programming experience. I think I miss a lot of other tools to show you like uh, but I think I'm gonna do this more often so thanks again for tuning in and I'll see